Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, folks. Um, wherever you're connecting from, we're happy to have you here with another installation of our Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar series. My name is Alex Pena. I will be joined today with Victoria Studley, Naman Mysarola, and Bryce Thelen uh, on introducing you guys on a deep dive of dynamic blocks. Today we have a lot of new content that hopefully shows you not even how to uh, use dynamic blocks, but use them in an efficient manner and hopefully in a day-to-day um, way as well. Uh, here are some pictures of ourselves. Victoria, uh, looking great. <laughs> my name, me here in the uh, with my beard, and Naman down here with the from uh, oh, joining us from Ohio. Um, as always, we uh, encourage you folks to leave questions in the chat window. Um, I myself, uh, Naman, and Bryce will be um, going through any of the questions that you ask and try to answer them as quickly as possible. Um, hope most of the times we'll try to supply links to form threads or um, articles that are previously created so you can have them for future reference as well. Um, we will be recording this session um, and making it available um, through our YouTube channel. Um, all the links are available through either the registration um, email that you receive, uh, the post webinar survey, or through the chat window. Um, we also want to inform you about our upcoming answer day on October 5th. Um, this is a great way for you to get uh, ask as many questions as you'd like. Um, it helps you get your answer, but also helps folks who, in a sense, don't um, aren't too familiar with the forums or uh, are just looking for an answer and have a similar question. They they also benefit from your um, questions. We'll have uh, fully staffed folks for 3ds Max, um, AutoCAD, Civil 3D, Inventor, Maya, Revit, and Vault on the English side of things. Uh, in the German side, we'll have AutoCAD. Um, AutoCAD verticals, which could include Plant 3D, um, Civil 3D, and uh, a bunch of those. Uh, BIM 360, Adventure, Fusion 360, Eagle, Revit, 3ds Max, and Maya. Again, um, we'll be here all day asking, answering as many questions as possible. This helps benefit everyone. Um, content out on the community, um, support for folks who uh, don't have the, in a sense, the courage to ask the questions. I also want to make you guys aware of our um, upcoming webinars. Um, as always, we like to give you a heads up just so if you do have time to kind of tune in and see something that you, you're not too familiar with the program, something you need brushing up on, or something that, that you haven't, uh, that you might be using frequently that you might want to learn how to use more efficiently, um, these would be a good, great way to kind of te keep a note on your schedule. Um, October 19th, we have layouts, printing, and plotting. Um, November 16th, we have uh, CAD content management and customization in AutoCAD. Um, December 14th, 3D modeling and rendering. January 2018th, we have our usual AutoCAD for Mac feature. As our um, AutoCAD for Mac is released, we like to let folks know of all the new features within the program and um, ways that they can kind of streamline the process of learning this. With uh, Build Your AutoCAD IQ, you can always uh, follow us through on our webinar playlist. Uh, we, as I mentioned, record all recordings of these, post them up to YouTube, and allow you to kind of freely look through them as often as you'd like. Um, feel free to share the link with your colleagues if it's something that might benefit them down the road as well. Um, uh, great links for AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT. Um, Oftentimes we have folks who are just starting up with the program. Um, we know that a lot of the time some folks are very familiar with everything as AutoCAD has been a long-standing um, program. But this kind of helps folks get started, um, links to learn and explore, things such as uh, um, how-tos or general um, guiding around the program can be found with, from here. Um, downloads to hot sip, how fixes, service packs. Uh, we all know how frustrating it can be when, when an issue is found um, that affects multiple people. Um, very easy to kind of uh, keep track under this downloads link on any uh, fixes that might be um, mitigating those issues that you could be experiencing. Uh, there's also a link to troubleshooting, which is pretty important. Um, uh, us at uh, technical support obviously do this a decent amount, but we always encourage folks that we publicly face this information so that way um, they can do their own troubleshooting and maybe save themselves some time in, in that aspect of things. Uh, that link will hopefully uh, help you search for an issue you might be having in an article that we may have already been created. And um, system requirements, just in case you're thinking of getting a new laptop, we all want those. 
today's topic, we're going to deep uh, dive into dynamic blocks. We have Victoria, who is a, a technical support specialist out of the Manchester office. She's great with dynamic blocks, has actually um, done this webinar uh, previously last year as well, and in hopes to provide some new content. She'll go over the basics of dynamic blocks, um, kind of go into a deep dive case study, and then from there, also supply some resources for dynamic blocks. So she has a great way to introduce new blocks to folks and a, a way to have folks actually participate a little further as well. Um, and from now, I'll pass it over to uh, Victoria so she can actually display this in AutoCAD. Hey, thanks for the great intro, Alex. Uh, before I take over the screen, I'm just going to run a couple of quick polls. Shouldn't take more than a minute or two here. Uh, the first thing we'd like to know is, is this your first, uh, is this your first Autodesk help webinar? So just let us know really quickly, yes or no. Uh, have you joined us before? Uh, if you are joining us for the first time, welcome. It's nice to meet you. And if you're returning, uh, thanks for coming back. Always great to see familiar faces here. And I'll go ahead and close that one out and quickly run the next one here. And this time we'd like to know how long have you been using AutoCAD or AutoCAD LT? Uh, just get a good idea for um, oh, more than 10 years, uh, between 5 and 10 years, 1 to 5, or less than a year. Just want to kind of know uh, the experience level of everybody we're talking to here. Let's leave that open for another second or two here. All right. And I'm going to close it out. Here we go. Uh, sorry, I didn't share the first one there. I'll share the results of this one. Uh, looks like a, a good number of you guys have been using this for uh, quite a while. Uh, hopefully we have some cool tips and tricks to show you. All right, and the last one before we jump into the program here. I'd like to know, uh, how often do you use dynamic blocks? Are they a daily feature of yours? Uh, you maybe use them once a week, once a month, once a year. Maybe you've never used them at all and you're just tuning in to learn a thing or two uh, about dynamic blocks and how they might save you a little bit of time day to day. All right, we'll leave that open for another couple of seconds here. Looks like we have quite the gamut. All right, I'm going to close it out and share those results. So it looks like we have a, a good mix of experience here. So we should have something for everybody. I'll go ahead and hide that. And Alex, I will take over the screen from here. And we'll jump right into AutoCAD. All right, Alex, can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Uh, so dynamic blocks in AutoCAD. What is a dynamic block first? Uh, dynamic block is a block reference that you can use in a multitude of different ways. Uh, so instead of having a single block uh, that looks identical, um, maybe you use it 10 times, maybe you use it 100 times, um, you can have a block that is the same block definition but has different configurations. So if you have uh, say a dining room table block and you want to be able to change the size of that block or you have a, a chair and you want to be able to flip it around into different configurations or um, the classic one that I like to use as an example is a door block. You might want to have that swing wide open at a 90 degree angle. You might want to have it completely closed or any of those angles in between. You might want to flip it to one side of the wall or the other. You might want to flip the, uh, uh, the swing left or right. You might want to change the size of that door. And so with one block, you can do all of these things. Uh, so you can have um, multiple instances of that block throughout your drawing um, with a multitude of different doors displayed in different configurations. Uh, we use the block editor in AutoCAD to, um, to do this. And so I've got this uh, block that we created last time open. And you can get into the block editor by right-clicking on the block and selecting block editor. 
and this will open the block in the block editor and by default it has this nice uh, gray background to remind you that you're at a different workspace. And so I have all of the components of my block in here. You can see I have a base point, I have a couple of different uh, parameters, and um, there are no actions in this one. Um, but I do have a, a block lookup table and a visibility state uh, that allow me to populate this title block example with some different information. That's uh, based on this block lookup table here that we've got. I'll double click it to show you what that looks like. So we populated it with some names and uh, project titles. And then our visibility state has a couple of different states in there. Um, inside the block editor, all of your tools are on your block authoring palette. And so you have your parameters, which uh, define which geometry you're um, going to be uh, manipulating and how. And your actions, which define exactly what you're doing to that geometry. And you also have parameter sets that link those things together and uh, constraints as well. Uh, all of these tools that are on the block authoring palette are also up here in your block editor contextual ribbons. You can see that here. You can still access all of the other ribbons that you're used to, but that block editor will almost show up in addition to those regular ribbons. All right. Um, so from here, I'm going to move forward and um, jump into some new content and again this will be a deep dive into some of the particular features using two case studies. Um, if you're looking for uh, a very basic introduction to all of these um, tools inside the block editor, uh, sorry the uh, dynamic block editor, um, we have a previous webinar uh, from last year that gave the very basic foundation. Um, we didn't have enough time to touch on some of the more advanced tools, so that's what we'll be doing today. Uh, I believe uh, Naman, Bryce, and Alex will be posting the link to that older webinar into the chat window uh, for anybody who's feeling a little bit lost. All right, um, so the first dynamic block that we're going to build today is this uh, collapsible um, pocket door. And so we have a four panel door. And I like to start with all of my geometry drawn ahead of time. This is sort of a personal preference. Um, you can draw everything in the block editor, but if you're working with visibility states, sometimes it's easier to go in with all of your geometry drawn to begin with. Uh, again, my personal preference, uh, you'll find what works for you. Um, so the first thing we'll do is select all of this, type in the block command, name our block, or panel sliding pocket door. And I'm going to leave the pick point as a default, but you can select a different base point. So if your geometry is off in space somewhere and not neatly nested at the drawing origin, it's a good idea to pick your base point specifically before you create that block. Um, I've checked open in block editor so that I launch directly into the block editor here. All right. So now that we're in here, uh, the first thing I want to do, um, well, the first thing I want to do is show you what we're trying to make. Uh, here's a, a finished version of this block. And so you can see, oh, uh, sorry, you can see here um, that I have the block and it slides into place. And I can leave this anywhere in the configuration. Um, the panels won't slide any farther into the pocket than they're allowed, and they won't go any farther out than, than, um, than I've limited them here. And I'll show you exactly how to do this. All right, so here we are inside the block editor. Uh, we have all of our geometry here, and we're going to set up some visibility states. The first thing we're going to do is click on the visibility state uh, parameter here in the block offering palette. And we'll add this uh, anywhere over here is fine. And we don't want this visibility state to uh, show up in our final block. We just want that stretch action or, to show up. So we're going to pick the grip and delete that. And this way it doesn't show up in the final block. I'll double click this. 
I'm going to create four visibility states. I'm going to rename this one here to four. And then we'll create three new ones. And this time what I want to do is I want to show all existing objects in this new state. And so we'll say three and two and one. And this gives us four ways to show the geometry here, or hide the geometry, uh, depending on which state we're in. So up here, you'll notice that the visibility panel is now uh, visible. And uh, these items are no longer grayed out because I've added this visibility state. So from here, I'm going to switch to the fourth visibility state. And we want this one to show all four panels expanded. Uh, but we don't want to show any of these excess panels in here. So I'm going to use the uh, Make Invisible button here. Uh, the command for this is BV Hide. But I'll just use the tool there. I'll click on the things that I want to hide in this visibility state, and they'll disappear. Okay. Uh, then I'll, I'll switch to the third visibility state, and we'll do the same thing use that tool, and this time we only want three panels showing, so we'll hide this one, this one, and, oh, sorry, not this one, uh, these two up here. And in our second visibility state, we'll hide these two and these two, so that when these collapse in, oh, I did that one wrong, didn't I? I want this one to have two. We're going to just uh, hide this one here. There we go. This way, when these two collapse in, um, these two disappear, and these two will show up. And then for number one, Uh, we want all three of these, and we'll leave the three pocket, uh, pocketed panels alone. All right, so now we can just check those. There's four, there's three, there's two, and there's one. So those all look correct. I'm going to stay on number four here. All right, so the next thing here that we're going to set up is a linear parameter to move these panels in and out of the pocket door here. That's right here on the parameters panel uh, palette. And what I'll do is I've created a little node down here, a point. You can put that on your deck points layer if you don't want it to plot. Uh, it gives me something to snap to to create the beginning of that linear dimension. And then I'll snap this to the end. And there's my distance parameter. Uh, we do want to change one thing. I have two um, grips on this distance. Uh, parameter, but I only want one, so I, you can do this when you add it, but I uh, missed the command prompt, so you can always come back and change that after the fact. So I'm in my properties palette, and scroll down, and I've got my numbers grip, uh, number of grips, change that from two to one, and then I just have the one grip that I need there. While we're in the properties palette, I'm going to set a minimum distance and a maximum distance. And this will make it so that this uh, set of panels can't expand any farther than 7 foot 3, uh, which is the maximum distance of them being all the way expanded. And they won't be able to go any farther than 1 foot 6, which is the depth of that pocket. So I want my minimum distance to be 1 foot 6. And I want my maximum to be 7 foot 3. And we'll get a visual cue on the screen here to show us that uh, uh, that limit. All right, so now that we have that set up, we're going to set up our move action. So we're going to pick this, and we pick the parameter first, and then you have to pick the side of the parameter that you want to apply this to. So if we had two grips, you could pick the left or the right. I'm going to pick the right where my grip is. And then you want to select the objects that you want to move. And so we're going to select all of these here. Okay. All right. 
and then we're just going to place that move parameter, uh, move action, I mean. Okay. So the last couple of, oh, yeah, so the last couple of things that we want to do are, um, we're going to create something called a double lookup. And in order to create a double lookup, we have to create a double lookup tool. And what that double lookup is going to let us do is uh, set this so that as you're moving your distance uh, action in and out, that's going to change the visibility state to either 1, 2, 3, or 4 uh, so that it displays nice and smooth as we pull it in and out of the pocket. Um, so there is already a lookup tool. You can see I've created a couple of these double lookup tools, but these don't come out of the box. So uh, the first thing you want to do is right click on this and say copy. Grab that lookup tool and then right click in the gray space and paste. And this will duplicate that so that you can do what you like with it. Uh, the second thing that you want to do is type in B action bar mode and change the system variable to zero. I already have it set, um, but if you're working out of the box, it's going to be set to one and you're not going to be able to uh, modify this tool appropriately unless this is set to zero. So that's B action bar mode. So then I'm going to right click on that tool and go to properties. And we'll just name it something. Uh, double look up. I'll uh, we'll call this number three since I have a couple of them in there. And then under actions, if you click in the space here, you'll see this little icon pop up. You click on it, and then it lets you add a couple of different actions. And so we'll add two lookups to this and say OK. So this creates our double lookup tool. And let me show you what the single one does first. If I add that, it just shows me a single lookup. This lets you have one parameter that has two lookups contained within it. So there we go. We have these two. Again, we don't want this to be visible in the final block, so I'll just delete the grip. And then we'll double click this first lookup. And the first one is going to, so we're going to add a, add a property here. And the first one uh, that we're going to add is that distance one linear parameter. And from here, we want to add four different lookup properties for this particular uh, lookup table. So four, and then tab will get you to the next line, three, two, and one. And then in the left-hand side, under input properties, we want to add the ranges of this distance parameter. So number one starts at one foot six, um, and there are a couple of things to note here as you're formatting this. Um, if I use a bracket on one end, it's going to uh, include the number that comes right after or before the bracket. If I use a parenthesis, it's going to include all the values up until but not including that number. And so I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to add a bracket and we're going to include one foot dash six inches. That's our first value. A comma means you're including everything up until uh, all of the values through, and then we're going to say three foot dash zero inches. And then I'm going to use a parenthesis because I don't want to include that three foot value, but I want to include everything up until. And this allows me to create a bracket for our lookup number two and include that three foot value here. You don't want it in both because if you include this value in both, um, both of these uh, ranges, then you'll have a weird visual glitch um, as, you're, uh, as you're dragging this back and forth. So we want this one to go from 3 feet to 4 foot 5, and parenthesis. And the third one will want to go from 4 foot 5 to 5 foot 10, parenthesis. And then this top one Four foot. Now that one didn't take. Uh, sorry, four foot five. Two five foot dash ten. There it goes. And then the top one here will be bracketed on both sides because we want to include both values. 
So 5 foot dash 10, comma, 7 foot dash 3. And we'll end the bracket there and say OK. So I'm going to double click on the second lookup now. And from here, uh, we're going to do the same thing, uh, add properties. But this time, we'll pick the visibility state and say OK. And then add those four same values. And this allows the two to talk to each other. So four, three, two, and one. And then from here, we're going to pick visibility state number four that we set up earlier, and then three, and then two, and one. And we'll say OK. And now these two lookup tools ensure that when we move this back and forth, uh, that the visibility, the correct visibility state will uh, take, uh, go into effect as we slide the door. Um, the last thing, well, let's do it this way. Uh, you have this option up here uh, to save the block. I tend to do this often, just in case. You don't want to lose your work. Um, and then we have the option to test the block. So instead of saving everything and then having to go back and forth into the block editor, you can just click on test block. And then you can see we're brought into a little test environment where we can see our block. And you can grab this grip. And I did something on purpose here to demonstrate a point. Um, you can see 7 foot 3, and as we slide it, everything kind of nests into that pocket neatly. But if I pick any of these values here, you'll notice that my grip disappears and I can no longer move the block. So we're not quite finished. I'll come up here and close the test block. And this brings us back to, uh, switch me into my other drawing here, but it brings us back to our, our block editor. So the last thing I want to do is make sure that all these things are visible. And so if I select them, we want to make them visible in all four visibility states. Now you could go through and switch to each visibility state and then uh, make use the Make Visible tool. Uh, but if you use the, if I mouse over this, you can see the command bv show command. So I'll type in bv show. It gives you the option to make these visible either just in the current visibility state or in all visibility states. Um, so if you know that you need to make something visible in all of your visibility states, that's a really quick way to do that. All right, so from here, I'm just going to save that and we'll test it one more time. And we have a nesting block. And you'll notice if I move this all the way to the end, it won't go any farther over than this corner here. Well, let me pick anything lower than one foot six, which is the end of my pocket. And it won't let me go any farther out than seven foot three, which is as far as I want those doors to be able to slide out. So here we have it. Close the test block. And then save our own block. Close the block editor. Save those changes, and there's our pocket door. All right, we'll pause here for a second. I just want to check in and make sure that everybody can see and hear. Um, Alex, Nauman, if you want to chime in for a second, uh, how are we doing? Uh, we're fine. Uh, so, okay. I think it was an overall uh, uh, outage in GoToWebinar because I could not even get on the phones, too. So. All right. Uh, but, um, yeah, we had some questions, though, with attribute. I don't know if you were ready to take those yet or not. Um, I do want to save them until the end, but um, okay, sure. I'll, I'll pause here for a second. Um, and I want to note, we've created a, um, a thread in the Dynamic Blocks uh, uh, forum. And so I'll take a second to show you that. You can see my screen here. Uh, we have a Dynamic Blocks forum that nested underneath the AutoCAD forum. Uh, if you go to forums.autodesk.com, uh, you can navigate through. You'll see all the different products. Go to AutoCAD and then Dynamic Blocks, and it'll bring you to this forum here. And what I did this morning was I posted about this webinar, and I created this post here. And after the webinar is over, what I'm going to do is rename this to something like Dynamic Blocks Showcase. And I want to encourage everybody who's here to join in and share your favorite block. I'll be posting uh, a screencast video and the drawing files for these blocks that we create today here in the, in the, the thread. And I'll create a, um, a recording of this video 
and post it on YouTube and um, post the, the final link in here as well. Um, and I want to create a conversation where we all share our favorite blocks. I know Nauman has a couple up his sleeve and, and Alex and uh, Bryce also have a couple. And so we'll be sharing our favorites. Uh, we'd encourage you all to join in and, and post your favorites as well. And then if we have any questions, we can always answer them after the fact in that forum. Oh, and if you want to subscribe to the thread and, and you're more of a, uh, a watcher than a, than a participant, but you still want to see what's going on, you don't want to miss anything, you can click on this topic options. And uh, if you click on, uh, subs this should say subscribe, I'm already subscribed to it. Uh, you'll see a subscribe button. It'll let you subscribe to it and you'll get updates whenever there's a new blog posted in here. All right, so that was our quick little break. Uh, I have one more block to show you, and then at the end, hopefully we have some time for q and A. I know we're probably running a little short uh, on time because of the technical issue, but we will work our way through here. All right, so the second block I want to show you is super cool. Uh, this one is a dynamic trim uh, block for elevations and section drawings. And I want to show you all the geometry that I created to start with. Uh, as I said before, I like to prep my geometry ahead of time, and th this kind of block is exactly why. Um, if you can think through all the different ways that you might want to display a block and create that geometry up front, it'll save you a lot of headache trying to jump between visibility states inside the block editor. All right, so this is the whole thing, but then I can show you how this is broken down. So I've got outside to outside lines, so you can imagine these profiles on the outsides. Uh, inside to outside, and then inside to inside. And then I have my profiles, and I've created a couple of different ones. Um, profiles that are fixed in place so they won't flip back and forth, and sections that are fixed in place. And then I have a couple that are set up to flip back and forth in case you want the profile to be one side or the other. You can always mirror your block, but uh, the flip action is really handy for things like this. Um, all right. So here, uh, again, we'll start, by, we'll start by showing you the end block to uh, give you a, a good picture of what we're building. So here's my final block. Uh, you can see I've got a couple of different options here. Um, this one, this is all geometry on. And I like to create one with all geometry on just so that I'm not missing any, anything. Um, it's, I, uh, let's see, section only. So section only, we'll do this. It'll just have the flip action. You can go back and forth. Oh, click too fast. All right, flip that back. And then you see profile only. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll flip this and show you. Even if it's flipped this way, uh, if I switch to the next one down, it's oriented the way I want it to be oriented. So you can drag this back and forth. And each one of these will show the the, uh, the trim in a different manner. So we've got inside to inside, uh, section to section, section to profile, profile to profile, and the same for inside to outside and outside to outside. So I'll show you a couple of examples here. But it gives you all the different configurations that you might need when you're drawing, uh, say, interior elevations or sections that might include trim profiles that are complex, save you from drawing a whole bunch of lines over and over and over again. So that's what we're building here. Uh, I've got this here. This is our geometry that we're starting with. So I'm going to select it all. And I'm going to enter block. And we'll call this trim section and elevation. All right. And I'm going to leave my, my block um, uh, base point alone again. But we're going to do something once we get in here. Uh, we're going to add a base point. So you see the base point option over here on the block authoring palette. And what I want to do is if I've got trim at the top of a room uh, that I've created, I, I really want to have that base point be in that top left corner. So I'm just going to add that base point there. Um, so I'm not always trying to move it and realign it based on a bottom left base point. So after this, uh, the next step here is to set up our visibility states. So again, uh, we're going to come in here, create our visibility, and this time I'm going to leave it. I actually want to move it up here um, to the top so that 
it's outside of my elevation or section after I uh, after I start using it. Um, I want to keep this uh, grip so that I can change between visibility states manually as opposed to the last block that we did where we switched um, using the uh, the grip uh, the uh, the linear grip. Um, so here um, I've actually prepped all the visibility states in another drawing here so you don't have to watch me sit here and uh, enter a whole bunch of different um, visibility names over and over again. Uh, so I've set all of these up. I just added them one at a time. But let me show you just quickly what I did. Um, this time I want to show, no, I'm sorry, I hid everything. So I, I have everything hidden on each of these uh, visibility states to start with, and uh, except for the all geometry on. And I'll show you why in a second. Uh, so here, I've got all geometry on current, but I'm going to switch to section only. And you'll see all of my geometry is invisible. But um, what I can do is use this uh, visibility mode, and it shows me a grayed out version of all the geometry in this file. Now the second thing that I want to point out is that I've gone ahead and set up different layers to begin with. These are all those layers that you saw in that first prep file. Uh, these are all stacked on top of each other. So what I can do is uh, freeze all of these as I set them up. So I know I don't need any of the lines to start with. I'm going to set up my flipping profiles and sections first. So I can also freeze this fixed profile and fixed section. So I'm just left with these two. Um, and let's see, we want section only. So I can actually freeze the profile. And now I'm only showing the things that I want to make visible. Use my Make Visible uh, tool here. And now I have that set up. I can switch to Profile only. And I can turn on my Profile Flip. Turn off Section Flip. Make Visible. And there we go. Now for these two, I want to add a flip action. Uh, so I'm just going to go back to section only, and I'm going to use my flip parameter here, and I'm going to place it uh, let's see, I'll place it right down here. I think I want it at zero zero actually. I can use my base point though. And we're just going to draw a line for this to flip around. And then my flip state, I'll leave it right here. And you can see that flip will show up right at the base point. Maybe I don't want that. Maybe I want to move it down just a little bit. So I'll drag that down to here so that it's not on top of my base point. All right. And I wonder why. Oh, I, uh, I can unfreeze my section flip. There we go. And now, um, under Actions, I'll grab my Flip Action, and then select my Flip State, and then select these objects. And then these objects will flip back and forth. Uh, the next thing we need to do is switch back to that Profile Only section. And you'll see that these are grayed out now, so I want to show these in my profile only flip state. And the last thing I want to do is make sure that my profile geometry is added to this flip state. So if you double click, it's going to prompt you here to add to that action set. So I can just grab everything in there and hit enter. And now if I want to save and test my block. If I can come out here. Oh, you can see it's only showing my uh, visibility states. Oh, wait a second. There we go. Okay, in section only, this will flip back and forth now. And I just want to check that it's working in profile. And there it is. Okay. So I can close my test block 
and come back in here. And now we'll move on to the next one here. So inside to inside, section to section. I'm going to come up here and unfreeze my inside to inside lines. And I'm going to turn on my, uh, my fixed profiles and fixed sections. Freeze my flipping profiles and sections. And I'm going to do the same thing. So I'll add all the lines, make those visible. And we're on section to section. So I'm just going to grab the section geometry. And we'll just work our way down the line here. So as I make these visible, this one just needs to be the, so this is the section to profile. So if I just want the profile, I can deselect those. And we'll work our way down. Okay. And I think for time's sake, I might not get through all of these, but you get the idea. Uh, when I switch to this inside to outside, I want to turn that one on and turn the inside to inside lines off. And you can see that these new lines have showed up. And I'll make those visible and grab the section and so on and so forth. Now from here, um, the last thing I need to add is that um, uh, is the linear parameter. And so you can access that uh, back on our block authoring palette. And I just want to grab this point right, right here and all the way out to here. And this time I do want both of those grips showing up. Uh, so I'm going to leave that as it is, but this time um, in my properties palette for the distance parameter, I want to set a minimum limit. Um, so we want to be able to stretch this as far as we possibly want. Um, so we don't want a maximum limit, but we do want to set, uh, I just say 24 inches as a, a minimum so that these profiles never overlap each other. And so um, the last thing I want to do is add a stretch action. And I'm going to add it twice. I'm going to add, add it to the, so I pick my distance parameter. And then I'm going to see the red X. It's asking me which side I want to apply this to, which grip. I'm going to pick the right one first. And then it's going to prompt me to draw a box for my stretch frame and hit enter, and then it's asking me which objects I want to stretch. And I just want to grab everything in the frame here, like so. And I'll put this over on the right so that I can differentiate my two stretch actions. So I'll put in the second one here. Again, pick my parameter, and then pick the side. There's that red X. And then draw my frame, and then select my objects. And the last thing that I want to make sure is that these uh, distance stretching, um, uh, the, the distance and stretch parameters and actions show up in all our visibility states. So I want to type in BV show and pick all of these except for that flip state. And make sure you get the grips as well or you'll have a hard time. They'll disappear on you and hit enter, and they'll show up in all of our, um, of our visibility states. Okay, so now we can test the block, or save the block, and test the block. This one might be a little incomplete, just for time's sake. I want to save a couple minutes for questions.
Uh, but this does our stretch. You can save your, oh, let's call geometry on. Uh, let's see, inside to inside, turn my layers back on so you can see everything. Yeah, I didn't get those endpoints correct in here. Uh, I did get them correct in the final version of the block here uh, where I was not rushing through to, to fix this. So um, I can show you this one here. And this is this will be the one that I post. And I'll record a, a screencast where this isn't so screwed up. Um, but yeah, uh, that is all of the um, all of the blocks there. And then I did show you the uh, uh, the two um, forum resources here. So you've got the whole dynamic blocks forum where you can ask questions. And I would say there. There's so much to learn about dynamic blocks um, that it's not possible for us to cover everything in one webinar, uh, which is why we're revisiting the topic and, and trying to make sure that you have the resources you need to ask the questions as you start exploring them. Um, so definitely jump into this forum thread. Uh, we do monitor it and we come in and answer questions um, uh, when you need help. And we have a couple of expert elites in here who are, are very knowledgeable with dynamic blocks as well. And they're always happy to help. And then if you create something really cool, definitely share it on that thread that we have going here. Uh, Naman, do you have um, a couple of questions loaded and ready to go? Uh, yeah, uh, one per uh, person was asking regarding the attributes itself and how to organize and how, uh, to where to place them. Because they're with dynamic blocks, uh, they keep moving apparently. So she, they were wondering how we can rein those in somehow uh, for the location when you change uh, the you know the scale or something like that. Oh, hmm. I'm trying to find that. <laughs> okay. I wonder if it's related to the base point of the of the dynamic block. I know a, a lot of times these. Um, uh, uh, if you don't have the base point quite right, if you're creating it away from zero zero in the drawing, it'll um, things can move around on you, especially if you're using uh, annotated scaling um, or if you've, you've got some scale actions in there. Um, so if you can keep everything nice and tight uh, right near zero zero, I'd recommend that first and foremost. I see. Yeah, I found the question because we got lost. They got lost in the no sound thing. So it says, "I love using yeah. visibility states. However, I have had problems with using attributes. Usually, I want the same attribute but in a different place. This doesn't work well. Could this be addressed? So if we can't address it here, um, definitely uh, we can uh, look at uh, posting something on the forum, or you can ask that question on the forum too, because there are uh, as it, Victoria said, expert elites helping out. Yeah, I think this is a great question for the forum. Um, I would recommend posting that as a, as a separate thread, just asking that question, maybe providing a sample block where it's not working quite right for you, and just explain what's going on. And um, I'd be happy to, I'm, I'm in there all the time, I'd be happy to take a look. Um, probably not something we're going to solve right here in the webinar. Um, but again, I'd encourage you to start a dialogue with us on that forum, and we can definitely help you find a solution for that. Um, attributes can be tricky, especially when you're dealing with um, scaling and, uh, yeah. Um, Nauman, do you have any advice there? Um, that would be the one thing. Libya is, I think, the expert there, and just make sure to post your block itself, the DWG file. Uh, it's for her to be able to, or them to help, be able to help you further as well. Yep. Yeah, that's good advice. <laughs> Lookup tables that somebody was asking. I'm going to post a link for the help on it, but uh, I don't know if you want to sure. quickly talk about that again. Yeah, I think I still have that one. I still have it open. I don't. Um, I can open it really quickly, though. Uh, we did, um, in the last webinar, uh, I think it was last spring, not this past spring. It was almost a year and a half ago now. Um, there is a block lookup table in there and uh, goes into detail about how to um, get that up and running. Where was it? Previous webinar. Uh, I believe this one has a block lookup table in it. And I think this one does as well. Let me just get these open here. 
Um, this one. You got one minute. Yeah, it's a little much to get into here, um, but I can show you basically how this works. Uh, block editor. Um, we've got our, so you would add a block lookup table, and then what you can, well, I'm sorry, that's a block properties table. No, I'm not going to be able to get this one open uh, during the live, the live session here. Um, but I will post the ones from last year in that form thread if you want to take a look, and I would encourage you to go back and take a look at that um, previous webinar where we delved into the block lookup table in a little bit more detail. Uh, just didn't quite fit in the presentation here today. Um, before we leave, I do want to run that one last poll. I uh, would like to know, as always, uh, whether you learned something new today in the session. So I will launch that and just let us know. Uh, if you have any feedback after the webinar, uh, you can send it to autodesk.help.webinars at autodesk.com or join us in the forum and give us the feedback there or continue the conversation with us in that Dynamic Blocks webinar or sorry, <laughs> Dynamic Blocks forum thread. Um, yeah. Okay. So I'll leave that open for a couple more seconds here. Looks like about half of you have voted. If you haven't voted, get that in there. All right. And I'm going to close it out now. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And uh, we hope to see you next month. Uh, at our Build Your AutoCAD IQ uh, webinar session. And this will be posted hopefully within the next couple of days here. And uh, hope to see you in the forums. Have a great week.